In this video, we're going to take a look at how to assign tasks in Microsoft Teams. I'm Gavin from MeTime, where we help organizations be more efficient using more of Microsoft 365 and helping their employees save time at work to do more of the things they love, either go and make more sales and get promoted or have time for well-being. If you're interested in working together, click one of the links in the description below. So relatively quick video today. If we are in a team, we can set up a planner board, which if we come into our test meeting actions, you can see what that looks like. Planner is the way to do shared tasks across the Microsoft ecosystem. And Microsoft have announced that they're improving it by joining a few things together. And if you're interested in the new planner, then click this the video next. And as you can see, as we come into planner, it says a new planner experience is coming soon to Teams. You can click learn more and go to a blog post. If you don't have a planner tab set up in your channel because one isn't set up by default, click the add a tab button and you should get one of the top ones should be tasks by planner and to do. The name is changing just to planner. And if you can't find it, just search for planner and it'll pop up there. Click that and you can either create a new plan, which is a new planner board, or use an existing plan from the team. So you can have multiple views of the same planner board, same plan, or you can have multiple plans in the same team. And depending on how you want to use it or how you want to see it, both can be useful. So we'll just come into our existing one. If you want to assign someone a task in Teams, you can just create them a task there, add a task. You can create different buckets. You can have lots of different, if we click into one we've already done, you can add different, add different labels and things and all the labels, although the default is the name of the color, you can click the little pencil icon and change the name. I don't think you can change the order of them. So if you really wanted a red or a cranberry one to be, I don't know, important, it, you can't then have that at the top. So you're sort of stuck with pink, red, green if you just want to rename the ones at the top. But like I said, the priority is not a good one because there is urgent, important, low priority there. I don't know anyone that makes their task low priority. I'm not sure. But I have to think about buckets and labels is that I don't think you can have an infinite number of labels because there's only that many that you've got on the screen. You can have, I'm sure there's a limit, but you can have lots of different buckets. I guess buckets you want to think about dragging cards through a process and labels is just something you might want to filter on or search on, perhaps. If you click add task and I don't know, read update paper on X, you can set a due date and assign it to somebody. I'm the only one in this team. And as soon as we do that, assuming it's not yourself that you've assigned it to, they're gonna get a ping saying you've been assigned something. If there's a due date, they'll get chased or reminded before the task is due, at the time the task is due, and after they haven't completed it, they'll still keep getting pop-ups and reminders saying you haven't completed this task with a link back to go and complete that task. So that's how to assign a task to someone in Teams in the most simplest way. You can have lots of other things in Planner, and if you want to know more about Planner, check out this video next. And you can have checklists. Unlike some other apps, you can't assign someone a checklist item. So if you had a task that multiple people need to complete, you can't create one task with lots of different subtasks. I guess you could do, but the danger is that they'll complete the entire task and wipe it out for everybody. Better is, although more work, uh, just copy that task multiple times and keep assigning it to somebody else. So if we had read update and paper actions, five people needed to do that rather than assigning all those five people to that one task where they might just click, yeah, I've done it. It'll then complete the task for all five people. It's better to copy that task five times and assign it to a different person. So one person is assigned to each task. So that's the easiest way to assign someone a task in Teams. Then two other ways, put new videos on Microsoft at work coming out every Tuesday. So click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time a new one comes out. So one, if you are in a chat or a conversation, you can click the three dots and do create task right from there. And that'll create a task for you. The default I think is it lives in tasks, which is actually in to do. And I've got lots of different to do lists there. If you scroll all the way down, you can then pick from some planner boards. And if we do it in, I think it was test meeting actions in our, I'll put it in bucket two so we can see it. It's then got the notes from the post that we've just done. We can put a due date 
on still and assign it to somebody still host a reply about this task add task task created and it sees that it's put a reply in the th that thread of information saying i've added a task here's what it's for click view details and it'll jump us out into the enlarged view of that board now so it's jumped us out into tasks by planner and to do which is the sidebar app of planner where you can see all of the boards that you've got access to as well as everything that's been assigned to you so assigned to me is wherever anyone assigns you anything from all over the Microsoft ecosystem within reason. If you want to know more about the nuances of tasks in the Microsoft ecosystem, check out this video next because it does get a bit complicated. But assuming you're using Planner, To Do, or Loop, everything will feed through into this list and there you can see everything that you need to do, which is pretty handy. If we jump back into the team, I thought we might jump us out here and go into text meeting actions, you can then see that task that we added straight from our post. And obviously we could have changed the title of whatever that action was and we can change it here if we forgot and again it just links us back to that message i'm sure at some point in time that used to be clickable if you can be bothered you can take that url add an attachment add a link to a url and then paste it in there and then say message something like that and then that that is clickable although it as you can see it's jumped us out into web browser to then jump back into teams which uh, hopefully microsoft are fixing with the new planner and again if you want to know more about that check out this video next so we can assign a task from a post or a chat like that we can if we're in a meeting i would suggest just going into your planner board and then typing whatever action as you go through just get them all out as you you know because you want to be head present in the meeting as well then go back through and actually go and assign them and make them proper tasks with due dates and everything. And like I said, the benefit of Planner is that everyone gets chased up for you. So you're taking a big chunk of the project manager's time of like, well, people are already going to get chased. So by the time you speak to them, if they haven't done it, you know they've been pinged quite a few times. Like, look, you still haven't done it. Just either change the due date if you've got too much on or let's just get those tasks complete. Last bit, which we did go through some nuances in that state of Microsoft Tasks video is in a meeting. So if we come in and create a new meeting for later today, again, this is in this video a bit more detail. Say you're adding a meeting, you can then add an agenda, which you could do before the meeting or during the meeting. I'm just going to do it before just for ease. It creates an agenda meeting notes follow up task for you, which happens to be in Microsoft Loop, but you maybe don't need to know that. And in the in the tasks, a section of a loop component when you add a task that in the background is going into a planner plan so again we can say you need to do this action we'll assign it to oh, no results found myself not sure why i'm popping up twice and give myself a date and they can choose the bucket although there's only one bucket because when you do this in a meeting, it's actually in the background creating a new planner plan for this specific meeting with nothing else in it. So that might create some clutter if you're a bit OCD, but that, that is what Microsoft has set up and that's how it works. So the benefit is if we've, I'm not sure if it'll do it before I've saved the meeting actually, but I think it should do. If we go back into our task by planner and to do and go to assigned to me, that should feed back through there. So you need to do this action look is in meeting notes too, because it doesn't know what we've called that meeting yet. And you can see it's got a loop icon. So even if you assign someone using Microsoft's default meeting actions, which is loop components, which is different to the planner board at the time of recording. I prefer to keep it all. If you've already got a planner board set up for your team, I would suggest keeping it in the team so you can easily go back to it. Obviously, if we were still talking about the subject, the meeting was about the subject at the time of recording, you can't put these actions back into this planner board if you did it via this loop, which I'm in agreement with you, it doesn't make sense, but this is what it is at the moment. So I'd suggest going to your planner board and taking actions like there in the meeting rather than using Microsoft's meeting notes plugin 
which is from loop, to do your actions there. But if you did do them, at least you know they're going to still end up with the right person. So there's a couple of ways to assign tasks to people in Microsoft Teams. And if that video was useful at all, let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe button, bell icon if you want to get notified when new videos come out. And if you really liked the channel, consider joining the channel using the button just underneath this video to support the channel and keep new videos coming out if you like them. And we've got some other tiers where you get early access to videos or if you really need some help and your organization isn't supporting you, it's a relatively cheap way to upskill yourself and get live Q&A with me. So ask me anything about Microsoft 365 ecosystem at work. Well, thanks for watching so far. I'll see you in the next one.